Uh, the church is um, continuing to reach out uh, to victims, inviting people to come forward. So we do have a sense that uh, uh, it is a hopeful sign that uh, abuse uh, in the church uh, has minimized to a great extent, uh, and we want to continue to be vigilant. We also see, however, at the same time that uh, even though this abuse happened uh, decades ago, there still are scars uh, that need to be healed. And so the church is looking for ways all the time to invite uh, those who have been victimized by abuse, not only the individual, but the family systems that have many times been affected, uh, also receive the pastoral care that they need. And that is true as well for the uh, parishes that have been affected by this. Uh, where, at least in my diocese, we have seen uh, a drop-off of attendance simply because people have been scandalized. We need a pastoral uh, approach that is going to invite people to trust again the church, but also to see that um, we have the gospel to proclaim and their lives can be enriched by that experience. We will always have in society this problem because there is a segment in the population that will always want to harm the vulnerable and children. I also believe that um, when we make decisions um, in our diocese about policy, uh, and also when we see that uh, maybe the next generation of leaders or volunteers or adults uh, begin to wane in their um, uh, vigilance in this area, uh, we need to remind ourselves that if we put the child first and their protection first, uh, that will motivate us uh, to keep moving forward. Uh, that really is a central issue. Whether or not we're going to, as the adult world, make sure that children are safe. Whether it's in the church, in scouting, in coaching, in schools, wherever it is, all of us as the adult world have a responsibility in that regard.